break the vicious cycle, command 2017. A famed French entomologist by the name Jean Henry Faber conducted a series of experiments on some processionary caterpillars, so named because they follow each other, forming a never-ending cycle. He wrote several books on entomology. At one particular experiment, he decided to put some flower pot in the middle of the procession with the delicacies of these insects. They could uh, smell the food. They could sense the food. But they continued going round and round and round, believing they were approaching the food. Seven days later, they all dropped dead out of exhaustion and starvation. Why? Because they confused motion with meaning. They confused activities with accomplishment. They confused processes with results. They confused good stories with deliverables. Busy, busy, busy. But year in, year out, we never take stock of where we are going. Our lives are full of activities, but they don't converge towards a given purpose. I don't know what brought you here tonight, but there's a likelihood there's one of you sensing you've gone a full cycle. The hard writing is on the wall. The warning signs are clear. You perhaps sense your life is a contrast. You try to make some positive changes in your life, but you settle back to your old habits. Past New Year resolutions haven't worked for you. Some old habits strangle your progress. You sense you're in a dead end. You're marked timing. You're in a vicious cycle. And now you desire to break from this cycle and make some progress, command 2017, and take charge of your life. There is something painful about entrusting your life to someone and then he betrays what he promised you. And then you end up in a marriage that is in a cycle of conflict. Day in, day out, week after week, month after month, you're solving conflicts. There's no longer bliss or spice in your marriage. The promise was laid down. Or perhaps you're single in our midst. And you've gone for several dates. But you've been played over and over and over again. No one is committing despite giving them an opportunity to date you. You are now getting exhausted with this V cycle and you desire to break off from the emotional roller coaster. Or maybe you're in our midst tonight and you're no longer excited about your place of work. It has become a monotonous routine. You don't look forward to your office desk. There is nothing more frustrating than reaching the end of the journey and you don't get satisfied. Working for so many years, you get for what you worked, but you don't get fulfilled. Or maybe you could be in our midst and you've been a novice candidate of job loss. Every time they are doing mergers, layoffs, downsizing, you are the most likely candidate to be kicked away. And you're wondering, why me? Why do they leave the rest? Or perhaps you're in our midst, and you're dead broke than you'd care to admit. You're in a financial vicious cycle. You try to fix the situation through anything you know how. You've looked for a job. You've tried to run a business, partnerships. You've tried to do supplies in government or corporate organizations. You've even tried to venture in rare ventures like mining and rearing quails. You even try to gobble your way to the top by going to the ever-increasing casinos, but nothing doing. At the meantime, younger people are joining the labor market, and they seem to be doing far better than they're doing. And you're here seated tonight, what's wrong with me, oh Lord? Where did I drop the ball? Where did I go wrong? Is there hope for me? I'm exhausted and fatigued by trying to fix it through sales and marketing, through social media platform and other avenues that have come up for making money, but you're not making progress. Ladies and gentlemen, in the year 2007, the national consumption in Kenya 
was 2 trillion Kenya shillings. Last year, we approximately, the private spending in Kenya was approximately 5 trillion Kenya shilling. And BMI, that's Business Monitor Intelligence, estimates in the year 2020, our national consumption will be 8.7 trillion Kenya shilling. I wonder tonight, does this money pass through your hands or you are an active spectator of the economy? Oxford-based wealth consultancy firm by the name New World Wealth ranks Nairobi City number five in Africa in terms of the number of dollar millionaires lagging behind Johannesburg, Cape Town, Cairo, and Lagos. Will you be one person pointing fingers and identifying the millionaires in Nairobi? And I don't know whether one day your child will ask you, Mom, it's okay, you've shown me the buildings of everyone. Where is yours? Real wealth is not how much you make, but how much you retain. In his classic book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki suggests that while riches is measured in terms of money, wealth is measured in terms of time. It's a factor of time. How long can you stay without working? Can you go for a holiday for three months and still not interfere with your incomes? You see, many of us are not comfortable with where we are. It's one primary motivation why you turned up tonight. But while we are not comfortable with our current status quo, we are very skeptical about change because change is unpredictable. Sometimes we think change may be worse off. So you're living an incongruent life, a life of contrast between what you desire and what you're doing, between what you want and how you are literally living, a serious contrast. I'm not accusing you, Albert Einstein is. He said madness is doing the same thing year in, year out and expecting different results. Something has to change. How strange it is that we expect change out there but not change in here. And maybe as you sit here, you sense time for change has done for you. And not just peripheral changes, but quantum changes, not tangential changes. Let me refresh your memory about your high school geometry. Tangent is that line that touches the circle on the outside once. It's a straight line. You can actually draw a right angle to the center of the circle. It touches the circle on the periphery. Periphery changes a skin deep. Quantum changes is an overhaul of the whole circle, a total change of your entire perspective. By now, if you've been an active member of this club, you may have concluded what you don't learn through mentorship, you learn by experimentation. So learning life skills might save you from unnecessary experiments. Learning life skills may save you precious time. Time waits for no one. Time is an emotional. Time will not wait for you to recollect yourself and correct yourself. Time moves on, whether you move or not. Season is a factor of time. And just like time is an emotional, seasons in life are unemotional. If you neglect during the sowing season, you will have by default neglected the harvest season. And seasons are unemotional. Avoid the shame of embarrassment during the harvest season by sowing during the sowing season. Seasons don't respect your beauty. They don't respect your gender. They don't respect your color. They don't respect your tribe. They don't respect your education. They don't respect your age. They don't care the reasons or excuses for not planting. In reality, you reap what you sow. If you plant a bad seed, you reap a bad seed. If you plant bad thoughts, you'll have a harvest of bad thoughts. If you plant sparingly, you reap sparingly. Prayers, well wishes, your gifts and your talents, they are meaningless and nonsensical if you neglect the sowing season. What you neglect today will be tomorrow's regrets. 
and seasons are faithful with you because you cannot ask nature in advance. Neither can you ask seasons to speed up or to slow down to wait for you to get organized. New Year for me presents a time to be honest with myself about myself, not to fool myself around. There comes a time we've got to have this hard talk. A lot of lies are out there giving you some shortcuts to the top and they have not given you results. I know many Kenyans who plant seeds in very many religious organizations, but they never sit down to ask themselves 10 years later, why is there no difference in my life? You see, the law of sowing and reaping is not my discovery. It's God's law. You can't untwist God. You can't circumvent the law. God has sealed it in his nature. It works for the righteous and the not so righteous. You will not go around it. So ladies and gentlemen, this evening, I want to share with you a five-step procedure on how to break your vicious cycles, after which I'll share with you some four principles to command you of 2017. And we can command the year before we break the vicious cycles. So allow me to start by breaking vicious cycles. And you see, we can't address that which we ignore. We can't deal with that which we fight. We must first admit there is an issue before we can deal with it. There is nothing more confining than keeping all your options open. Several years ago, I had the privilege of visiting the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. It's a large arc where 12 boulevards feed into it resembling spokes from a large wheel. There are no lanes. Boulevards are large streets in a big city. And we got lost going round and round in a cab before we could trace our boulevard. But again, for you to enjoy the sight of the city of light, you've got to make a choice and choose a course, choose a boulevard. But you can't keep going round the roundabout without making that decisive choice. I want to suggest tonight, for you to break from your vicious cycle, step number one. Realize you're the primary victim of your choices. Realize you're the primary victim of your choices. Your nutritionist does not get sick when you ignore her health plan. Your financial advisor still has money in the bank if you blow off your budget. Refusing to go to church, smoking crack, defying everything your father taught you because you feel he neglected your childhood doesn't harm him. It destroys you. Choosing to become a loose cannon because your mom's way was not the narrow and the straight may kill you as your mom lives on. Sleeping around because your spouse had affairs only hurts you all the more. Sleeping around to hurt or to dishonor your ex is digging a deeper hole that you're already living in. Clubbing the whole night, drinking hard stuff because you're offended by your spouse will only destroy your health, your peace, and your career progression. I want to suggest tonight some of the bad habits we embark on to punish those we think offended in our past just hurt ourselves. It is not rebellion against them. It's rebellion against yourself. You've got to ask yourself this hard question. Do you deserve this punishment year in, year out? Because you're not rebelling against the people you think offended your past. You're rebelling against yourself. Realize no one has to go to bed with your personal choices. We choose our sorrows and joys long before we experience them. Some of the sorrows you're going through today has to do with the choices you made yesterday. 
What you do with the message I'm going to share with you tonight is really up to you. People will progress as you stagnate. New people will find their way to Sense 11 Life Club and move on. As you meander in indecision. Some of the people you are accusing and blaming for your past have since moved on as you linger in defeat and wallow in failure. Realize that the choices you make, you are the primary victim of those choices. And the best punishment that you can give those you think offended you is to succeed. That's the easiest way to frustrate them. Otherwise, you confirm their prophecies of doom. Step number two. To break your vicious cycle, stop sitting on the fence. Stop sitting on the fence. You've got to make a choice on the next course of action 2017. For most of you hearing my voice tonight, the real challenge before us is not knowing the right thing, but the courage and the discipline to do the right thing. How do you explain the case of a smoking doctor who has specialized in treating lung cancer? Many of you seated here know that the only role you can play about your health, you individually, is diet and exercise. The rest you leave it to God. But how many here have the courage to embark on the right diet and to exercise daily? While you have the knowledge, do you implement that knowledge? While I know you are taught all year long that if you do a habit for 21 days, it delivers results, I suggest do it for 40 days. If you stick to a program for 40 days, I know for a fact it will deliver results. It is going to, to create a new way of lifestyle. But if you have reached an addiction level in a certain behavior that you want to overcome in 2017, my suggestion tonight, don't try to walk through this journey alone. Look for an accountability partner, someone you can be accountable to, someone who can keep you on your toes. Many alcoholics overcame it by enrolling in AA, Alcoholic Anonymous. Because the easiest way to get out of an addiction is in the same manner in which you got into it. Many people got into drugs. The primary reason they got into drugs, someone introduced them into drugs. The first step to get out of drugs is to change the peers, to change the association. You get out of an addiction in the same manner in which you got into it. If you have indulged over Christmas, eating unnecessary pork and beef more than your required quota, and right now you're realizing that your shape is not skewed against your desire, what is in your mind on the mirror is contrasting. I suggest to you join a social group, join a social club. They will help you walk through the journey of reversing the same gain. You gain the weight eating, you've got to lose the weight, stop, uh, stop to eat the same food. And stop in a lot of sleep and go exercise that body. Well, I, I have been warned before that women who are overweight live longer than the men who mention it. So let me stop there. <laughs> let me stop there. I, I think let's, let's play it safe. Let's go to step number three. Step number three, are you there? Stop identifying yourself with your struggles. Stop identifying yourself with your struggles. I want to request you, I beseech you tonight. In 2017, let's eliminate, let's eradicate some phrases from our lips. I have a loose temper. I always attract the wrong type of men. Oh my goodness, I have a fat gene. I'm not wired for business. I think there's a spell over my life. They are against me. They get intimidated by my presence. How strange it is that we latch on to and identify with our struggles in life. And I want to warn you tonight, the more you identify yourself with your struggle, the longer it will linger, the longer you will stay in that habit. You're the one who sets your own standards and your own expectations, and you never rise above your expectations in life. You've got from today henceforth purpose 
I will clean up my tongue. I will not identify myself with my struggles. Let alone this year, I will dedicate one of the Friday evenings to teach on the power of the spoken word. I've taken over 10 years to study that topic and wrote a book on the same. And many of us might not be conscious about how words attract our realities. And I'll touch on that for one and a half hours for you to be careful with how you use your tongue. Step number four. Identify yourself with your desired results. Identify yourself with the desired success. Reframe your thoughts and your words and begin to proclaim that which you want to see. Let me hear after this meeting when we are shaking our hands. I am the best accountant in Nairobi. I am the best actuary in East Africa. In our restaurant, we are merchants of happiness. In our photography, we are the market leaders in Africa. Hey, I know the nuts and the bolts of my business just come. Look no further. Identify yourself with your desired success. That's why I appreciate the people in this hall who, begin, who have given themselves nice titles, like Millionaire Anthony. Because he's identifying himself with where he wants to be. Let's admit it, initially, you will feel a bit strange. And that's okay, because change is strange. But as you continue to do that, it will become your new normal. And unconsciously, you start working towards that because you're raising the expectation. You know, my assistant in the office told me when he met Anthony for the first time and he said he's millionaire Anthony, she almost suspected he's the owner of KICC. <laughs> you see what he did? He raised the expectation. So people begin to see you from the way you see yourself. They will never see you beyond how you see yourself. So start identifying yourself with that place where you want to go, that place of success. Step number five and the last one, bless the successful. Bless the successful. I know this will sound a very strange point because many of us have never been conscious about what it does to you when you begin to bless those who succeed. And many of us perhaps have never been conscious of this fact, losers are always cursing. Let me tell you this. The moment you bless the people who are succeeding, you start attracting success. This is how it works. And perhaps let me just say this. As I say this, maybe you're in denial. For you to know whether you are a victim of not blessing the successful, I give you a very simple acid test. Do you ever see someone who has made a lot of money and immediately in your mind, you begin to look for the loopholes you begin to check where he cheated his way to the top. Where and how he corrupted. If that describes you, you have an issue to deal with. Because the moment you believe that, this may not necessarily be the truth about that person. But because you have believed it, it is your truth. And what you have done, you have created a negative association with that place of success. Because you have made a conclusion, people don't succeed fairly. They corrupt their way to success. So you create an energetic discord. Your body forms a resistance towards success because it is not achievable. It can only be corrupted. The moment in your mind you know the only way to succeed is to corrupt your way to success, then I guarantee you it doesn't matter how much you tithe, it doesn't matter how many prayers you go for, you have already created a discordance between you and that place of success. So I suggest tonight, begin to bless those who are successful. I know it's not very easy when you're doing so badly and someone close to you is doing so well. Even though you bless them with your mouth in your heart, sometimes you begin to curse them. I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about your neighbor. <laughs> but believe me, the moment you begin to bless them, you immediately break the bondage of failure. And you immediately believe 
that that is attainable, it is achievable. So you start preparing, walking towards that. It doesn't affect them, it affects you. When you begin casting success, it doesn't affect that other person. He is on the move, it affects you. In this country, rarely do we praise people who succeed. Not so long ago, CS Education did a phenomenal job. Fred Matiangi, I honor him and I wanted to do this in public. I know we have different views. I apolo unapologetically say this. I've been academics, I've been in the world of academics, and I know the man has done a phenomenal job. If you're one of among the people who started speaking again is that, you're the person I'm describing. <laughs> because you never see nor appreciate success. And one you don't, once you don't deal with that, you'll never reach that place of success because you are fighting that position of success. Having said that, I'd like to invite you to what I would consider your take home message tonight, how to command 2017. And in reality, this is not about commanding 2017, it's about commanding your life. And I'd like to share with you some four principles that have worked for me and for many others. Principle number one, undergo a mind shift. Undergo a mind shift. I've talked about this severally. I want to take a different angle tonight. And I ask you this, what do you dream about? I can tell you without a shadow of doubt Dr. James Mwangi doesn't dream at night being attacked by a phantom. He dreams how the equity story can be as influential as Microsoft or Coca-Cola. At the meantime, there's a woman listening to me here who dreams how her husband is attacking her with Rungu. <laughs> and she plays the tape until she conducts a funeral and the body begins to shake. There's someone here who dreams about being kicked away by a landlord. And what you don't realize, have you been blessed by this video? Please like and share with family, friends, and colleagues. Great people are either sources of light or they are mirrors that reflect the light. Be a channel of blessings to others and hit the subscribe button to enjoy thousands of my videos free of charge.